welcome to our circuit advent service for 2021. It's really good to share together on this second Sunday of Advent. A welcome to our service, the Reverend Trey Hall, Director of Evangelism and Growth for the Methodist Church. Thank you to the Reverends Ruth Charlesworth and William Booker, who will be leading our prayers, and Jeanette Barber, who is a member at Thirlby Methodist Church, who will bring our Bible reading. As we gather, let us pause in the presence of God. This second Sunday in Advent, we light our second candle. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who lived in a land as dark as death, a light has dawned. Our candle dispels the darkness. Lord, be with us and spark our worship. Make us lights for the world through Christ, the light that enlightens all. We sing together the worship song for Advent by Muggy Dawn, Into the Darkness. Into the darkness of this world, into the shadows of the night, into this love. Place you came, lightened our burdens, eased our pain, and made these hearts your own. Into the darkness once again, oh come, Lord Jesus, come, come with your love to make us whole. Come with your
here we are in our kitchen to pray and to celebrate the glory of God who comes to his people to set us free. Let us pray. O oh God, you come to us because you love us. You came to Abraham and Sarah with the promise of be of your covenant. You came to Moses and you sent him to set your people free. <clears throat> Through the prophets, you came to your people to call them to your ways of justice and mercy. Through David, you came with the promise of a Messiah to rule your people. Through John the Baptist, you prepared your people, calling them to repentance. Through Mary, with such faithful love and humility in Jesus, you, our God, came. Our Good Shepherd, wrapped in swaddling bands and laying, laid in a manger. The Lamb of God, to offer yourself on the cross as the sacrifice to set humanity and this whole world free from sin and to bring us into your life. And now you come to each of us, risen from the dead, offering us your victory over sin, over death, and over all the powers of evil. You knock on the door of our heart, waiting for us to open the door to invite you in, to let you share with us your victorious power. And you will come with great power and glory when all will be revealed and the judgment take place at the resurrection of the dead. Come Lord, now, wherever we are, whatever state we're in, come and fill our lives with your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Let's continue celebrating as we use the words of the first six verses of Psalm 27. And if you'd like to, I invite you to join with me in singing that response which comes from the very guts of all God's people in heaven or on earth, singing Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, sing praise to the Lord, Alleluia. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. Alleluia, Alleluia, sing praise to the Lord, Alleluia. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord 
all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will guide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted high. Hop up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, sing praise to the Lord, Alleluia. Alleluia, glory to God. And now we listen to a setting of the traditional reading for this Sunday in Advent from Luke chapter 1 verses 68 to 79 entitled The Benedictus, we listen to it sung by Jason Silver, worship leader from Canada. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his prophets, as he spoke through holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all those who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we being rescued from the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins by the tender mercy of our God the dawn from on high will break upon us to give to those who sit in darkness, the shadow of death, to guide our feet in peace, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way.
Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11, Thanksgiving and Prayer. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, for whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Amen. And sitting here with with Trey Hall, our connectional lead for evangelism and growth, as we gather for our Advent worship uh, this Advent season 2021. Welcome, Trey. Hello, Andy, and, and hello, good circuit uh, folks of the circuit. It's lovely to be with you all today. Thanks ever so much, Trey. Good to have you here. Uh, let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, in this season of Advent, as we look with hope for the light of Christ, I pray, Lord, that you would help us as we reflect together now, that you would bless Trey with words from your heart, uh, that we might hear your voice and see your light of truth in and through Trey's testifying. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Trey, um, just tell us a little bit about what you do for the Methodist Church. So um, right now, my, um, my, my ministry is serving as the Director of Evangelism and Growth for the whole, the whole Methodist Church, the Connectional Team. And what that means, I get to work with uh, people on the team in uh, things like discipleship, formation, faith formation, evangelism, church planting, pioneering, all the good stuff. And not only, <laughs> not only working with... Um, with folks on the team, but obviously working in concert, uh, working together with folks across the connection. So leaders, uh, circuits, churches, districts, anybody who wants to, to uh, take a step out in, out of the comfort zone uh, by God's grace and, um, and try to be the church in a new and fresh and rooted way in the 21st century. So, so I feel very, very, very grateful to be in that, in that work. Fantastic. And uh, St. Paul that we just heard from in Philippians talks about, I thank my God every time I remember you. So now that we know that about you, uh, we as a circuit can thank our God every time we remember you in our prayers and mm. all that you're encouraging us to do in reaching out. And I, I detect that's probably not an English accent. <laughs> that's right. It's a, it's a North American one. And more particularly, it's a, a, a US accent. So I'm from the southern part of the U.S. from, from Tennessee. Uh, that's where I was raised up. Um, went to uni and uh, training college in the south in Tennessee and Atlanta and then moved to Chicago um, with a little one-year stop in London. So I spent most of my adult life in, in Chicago and then moved back to, to Britain about six years ago now. But today we're, we're recording this, um, I know, in advance of a, of a, circuit, um, a circuit service later in the month but it today in america it's thursday uh it's thanksgiving day ah. which is the day where we give thanks yeah. for we count our blessings and give thanks for well people give thanks for all kinds of things don't they but you know um i think it's a wonderful day it's like it's the it's a uh, it's like christmas without the commercialism right it's like it's like yeah. being together and giving thanks and and, and without needing to buy people buy people things so how lovely that we're talking about thanks and thanksgiving on on the American Day of Thanksgiving. American Day of Thanksgiving, yeah. Well, thanks for mentioning that. I hadn't <laughs> clocked that one. Um, along with that Thanksgiving and that reflection, um, I, I wonder, you know, St. Paul writing this letter, 
uh, his heart is full of hope and grace and he's giving thanks for the Philippian Christians, but we know where he is. He's writing from prison. Mm. Uh, have there been times when, like St. Paul, you felt chained because of the gospel? That's such a, such a, a good question and a heavy question. I, and I, this, this past summer, uh, we were in, in Malta. I've never been to Malta, but it's, 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 of course, if you look in Acts, it's the place where Paul was shipwrecked on his way to Rome, where tradition holds he was executed. That's not in the biblical evidence, obviously, but, um, and he was imprisoned there in, in Malta. And, and we got the chance to go um, to the place where the tradition holds he was in prison and see the cell in the caverns where he was held. And uh, I felt very, um, I mean, I love St. Paul. He's, he's, mm. he's maybe the person in the Bible that I identify with most as a human being. Um, and so to, to see that, that place and to come in contact with the place where he was on the way to Rome. Um, and yet, you know, his writing, which is just... Not just in in not just in in, in Philippians, but just uh, his testimony is one that just pours out goodness and grace and light and trust. And the mm -hmm. fact that he is doing that from a place of con constriction and and and, and being changed, it, it chained is so, I think, so amazing. I have to say, I am I uh, have never been um, persecuted for my faith or. Um, ridiculed or oppressed for being someone who tries to carry the gospel. So I, I can't, I, I honestly don't identify with, with that actual physical imprisonment. Um, the chains that have been in my life have been largely chains of my own making, right. uh, chains uh, of my own sin, chains of my own troubles, chains of my own addictions, all those kinds of things. So the gospel has broken me out of those things or is breaking me out of those things and giving me hope. But um yeah, uh, I, ha I haven't been oppressed by, because of my faith. I know people across the world who have yeah, yeah, and yeah. receive their testimonies as siblings in Christ. But yeah. What hope do you think there is for those who feel chained down by life circumstances? Wow. Well, I mean, haven't we all been there? Aren't we all there? And, and you know, some people who, we, who, who may be us in the circuit tonight, um, some people that we know uh, who have been oppressed and chained because of, of their faith in other places. And, and that may be your story. Like I said, that's not really my, my experience. It, it may be one day, who knows where God will lead me, where, where I will lead, lead any of us. But we all, I think, um, if we're honest, know what it's like to be chained down and to be stuck and to be kind of in a place of, by life circumstances, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just just immobilized or paralyzed. And sometimes that's because of stuff that's happened to us that's not our fault, that we, you know, has just happened. And sometimes that's our stuff of our own doing. And sometimes it's, a, it's, it's all interconnected. It's all messy. Sure. Um, I think when those things, I think for me, I just want to say, when, when those things come into my consciousness, the stuff that is um, uh, life circumstances, I think there is, sometimes um, uh, a temptation to sort of just run from that. It's like, let's yeah. run, sort of to panic, fight or flight. Let's yeah. go, let's go, let's go. And what I, what I hear Paul saying throughout the whole scripture, the whole New Testament is, you know, not to seek out oppression, but when you are in a place of struggle, when you are a place of facing the unknown, when you're a place of stuckness, that God is, as I hear Paul, and this is one of my own experience, not to run, but to sort of to sort of stay put and let God go deep in you mm. in that experience, mm. and that until we stop being kind of um, people who panic and run from our stuff, um, then it, it, until we allow God to work on us in that actual place with with that actual stuff, that we will possibly, depending on stuff, just find ourselves taking the stuff wherever we run, you know? Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, um, yeah. so I think for those people who are stuck uh, and we've all been there trapped or oppressed or just feeling like there's nowhere to go or there is, um, you know, nothing worth living for or no way out. Um, I, I think, I think the first thing is just to be honest about that and not to try to cover it over, but say, like, this, this is where I am. This is what I'm feeling. And to be able to share that with someone and just and say like, I need help 
or like, you know, not to, I think as Americans and British folks, we sometimes swallow the stuff mm -hmm. and try to, to sublimate the, the, the feelings we're having, the stuff, the sickness, but just to be honest and, mm -hmm. to, and to share that with someone. Um, I, I, I work a lot in the 12 step recovery community, uh, 12 step addiction recovery community. Okay. I myself, myself, I'm someone who's you know, been sober for a number of years now and got sober through 12 step recovery. So work with a lot of folks who, because of their addictions, because of our addictions, you know, are stuck, are hitting bottom, are feel chained by that their stuff. And I think um, when there is uh, the, the joy of working with folks in recovery is there comes a point with folks in addiction when they when they realize, when we realize there is nothing we can do really to fix ourselves. There is nothing I can, now there, there are some things that, you know, we can do to make life a little better, you know, but at the end of the day, for the big problems, for the big challenges in life, it, we are unable to sort of fix ourselves, you know, and I think that's, that's Paul's message throughout the yeah. New Testament. We cannot fix ourselves. We cannot fix ourselves. Um, but there is one, there is one um, who, who can. And I think there is a, a real, I think, again, for Americans and for Brits, there's such a, we have that thing where we sort of like push our feelings yeah. down. Yeah. But we also have this thing going on. I have this thing going on too, where it's like, if there's a problem, we can fix it. Yes, yes we can. Yes. yes, we can. You know, and I think the, the accent's a little different for Brits as it is for Americans, but there's this sense of we can do it. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing, right? That's a beautiful thing that bringing that kind of enthusiasm and can do spirit to problems can be a great thing. But for the deep stuff, for the stuff that really gets us stuck, I think that kind of can do spirit only goes so far and, mm -hmm. and never really is the cure. It might help a little bit, but it never is the cure. And so the cure is, in my experience, the cure is, well, surrendering to the one who can, can heal, surrendering to the one who can take us to a, a different place. And isn't that what St. Paul's talking about in verse seven? All of you sharing God's grace with me? Mm. All of you sharing God's grace with mm. me? Yeah, the sense of that it happens not just between me and, and God and, and Jesus Christ, but it happens in this web of connection yeah. with others, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, I think we often, I think we often say we believe that, but we, we practice a very individualized kind of sense yeah. of like, if, if I'm going to, if I'm going to get right with God, it's going to be me and Jesus, you know? Yes. yes. But like, actually Paul's saying, no, no, actually uh, you have helped me uh, dear, dear, dear Christians in, in Philippi, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and he's obviously helping them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it just brought to mind while you were talking there, um, I saw uh, a reflection on 30 years since the release of Terry White, mm. uh, just a few days ago on TV. And then there was an interview with him asking what that internment had meant to him and what he'd taken away. And he said, I learned I learned the gift of God's grace mm, mm. by being chained to that radiator. I just, mm, mm. You know, and, and it's kind of what you were saying, you know, we, we can't lift ourselves above it, but we can learn something about God's presence. If he can in that incarceration, goodness. Oh yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite writers who's helped me, not just a writer, but someone who's helped me in my own life of prayer is a, a guy, um, 500 years, lived 500 years ago, called St. John of the Cross, lived in yeah. Spain and yeah. was locked, locked up because of, because of his take on the gospel. Yeah. was locked up by his own community for the better part of a year in a little toilet, little toilet cell, chained to a toilet and um, fed nothing really besides bread and water, lived in dark. And it was there in that experience, he came to call it later, an experience of night or the dark night. Yeah. Yeah. It is there that he experienced, perhaps like Terry White, this kind of inflow of, of grace. Um, and, and, and he says to those of us, which is all of us, who, who think that there is no way out, there is nowhere to go, there, we are stuck. He, his counsel is from that place of, 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 of night. There is some place to go. There is a larger horizon. Even in that constrict, constricted places, there is a larger horizon. Uh, 
only God can take us there. Hmm. Only God can take us there. And here's the good news. God intends to take us there. Yes, yes, yes. It's not just that God can, it's that God will and promises to. And I think that journey to that, that horizon, we're an advent, always searching the horizon for mm-hmm. a star, you know, in the shadows, shadows and light, darkness and light, that journey of, of allowing, of surrendering to God, who promises to take us to that, that broader place, that, that, that place of salvation, mm-hmm. That is a journey of, of pain and, and illumination, right? So I think, mm-hmm. and this is Paul's journey, right? This is yeah. the way of Jesus. These, these guys, St. John of the Cross, Paul, they're not making this up. This is the way of Jesus, right? You know? yeah, yeah. And so the, the journey is not, the promise is not that like, today's hard, tomorrow's going to be awesome. The journey is as you, that I will lead you to a place of salvation and, and come what may, I will be with you. That's what God, I think, says to us in Jesus. Yeah. I will be with you. So we've got, in this conversation, we've got St. Paul, a change for the gospel. We've reflected on St. John of the Cross, the same. We've reflected on Terry Waite, the same. We all have our own different versions, not in the same extremity of those chains, but we also have the hope. Uh, um, God who's going to take us there Uh, and St Paul reflects on that living hope of God's love leading to knowledge and depth of insight he says in this passage Mm -hmm. depth of insight Uh, I just wonder is there a time when you felt just overwhelmed by God's love uh, and the hope that it offers well and the depth of insight I think is so such a a helpful um, kind of phrase so, so I'll tell you a story about my own experience. Um, and this is, this is 12 years ago when I got sober. So in AA, for those of you who don't know 12 step recovery, it's 12 steps that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you follow these steps. And the promise is, is you will get a miracle. Not only will you, this is the promise of AA, not only will you be able to stop drinking, that's just the very beginning, but you will, AA promises, receive a miracle of God healing you or your higher power, depending on your religious background healing you of your desire to drink. Now, if you've never had a desire to drink in a kind of compulsive way, you will not know what that kind of compulsivity feels like. But just fill in the blank for whatever in your life, friends, feels you feel run by or driven by or compulsive about. That could be judgmentalism, that could be a vice, that could be whatever it is that the AA promises that you we can experience, this is the hopeful thing. Not only do you have to, what well, can you stop drinking, but you will not stop drinking because of your own willpower, your own, like, I'm not going to drink. You will stop drinking because God will fill you and heal you from your compulsion to drink. And I experienced that. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Part of that healing, um, part of that miracle is in, 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 in the 12 steps. In your fourth step, you write down everything that you have done in your life that has harmed yourself, another person, or harmed the world. And you write that down. It's extremely humbling, let's just say, to say the mm. least. I mean, just mm. imagine getting that, talk about getting honest, getting that honest with yourself. Mm. And then in your fifth step, uh, you, you, with someone that you trust, which could be your AA sponsor, sort of like a discipler, or your pastor, or someone that you trust, you tell them all of that. You admit it to yourself, to God, and to one other person. This is where Paul is saying we're all t- we're in it together, right? right. This is not yeah. an individual. And you, you do that, which is also a humbling experience. Mm. But for me, when I did that the first time with my sponsor, who was a Christian man, and he sat across the table as I read through my list of stuff, all the stuff that stuck me and chained me down. And just looked at me, and I'll, I will never forget it. His name's Mark. Looked at me with the eyes of compassion, with the eyes of Jesus, and just said, you know, <laughs> sorry about that. Said, um, look, uh, welcome to being human. You know, this is what he said. You're welcome to being human. You've got yourself in a mess. You know what? But there is, there is one, there is a higher power who's going to help you out. You know, and just hearing him welcome, he, hold that stuff with me. Yeah. And then in, in the step six and seven, you basically humbly ask God to help you 
remove these things from your life in God's own time, in God's own wisdom, in God's own healing to remove these things from your life. And that experience over the course of uh, one, one evening of, of, of sitting in Mark's office and sharing those things and then praying this seventh step prayer, which is asking God to remove these, these shortcomings, was you would think it would be, in many ways, it was a, a super painful experience to face that stuff up, but it was also perhaps in my entire life, the most direct and gratuitous inflow of grace and hope because I had let go or was beginning to let go of my own belief that I could fix myself and take responsibility and then surrender it to God. Hmm. And, you know, that was, that was a miracle. So that's my, that's one of the testimonies. Um, and I, I feel like I get to hear those every week in AA. Hmm. Um, sometimes I get to hear them in church. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, bless you. Thank you for your openness, your honesty and for hmm. sharing with us that sense of real hope that can come when we surrender ourselves to God. Uh, and that's what St. Paul is saying here as well, that you, you're not, your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and mm. may be pure and blameless at the day of Christ. Mm. Bless you, mm. Uh, mm. Trey, and bless you for mm. sharing that sense of hope. And that's part of this Advent message. We have hope because the light is going to shatter the darkness mm. uh, and God's in that journey with us. Um, finally, what, what single phrase then, what single memorable phrase can you offer us to help us to remember the living hope of God's love for all, something we can take with us? Well, um, can it be a phrase? Does it need to be a phrase from Philippians 1 or do you mean a phrase in general? Just anything, anything oh. that's going to help us to remember that hope that we have. I'm a musical person. I love to sing. I love, I love music. I love songs. And I know, I know, I know you do too. Or I do? sense that I sense yeah. that you do, Andy. Yeah. Um, there's an old hymn, which has been set to different tunes in America and in Britain. And there's modern tunes to this, but the text is, I think it's a 19th century hymn. And there's just, um, there's two, two lines that I pray nearly every day as sort of a mantra when I'm faced with stuff that's, you know, with, with life, you know, and, and the words are, Oh, love that will not let me go. I rest my weary soul in you. And for me, those, those two things, the love that will not let me go, no matter what, I surrender, I rest, I rest myself in you. And that for me is spiritual joy. And that is where change happens. Mm. Um, so that old 19th century hymn, singing through my soul and singing through my heart. Oh, love that will not let me go. Bless you, Trey. Thank you so much for being open, for sharing, uh, for inspiring us and challenging us too along the way. Uh, so let's pray together. Uh, pray for you and pray for us. Gracious, loving God, we thank you that there are no chains that you cannot blast away. Mm. We thank you that you are with us in all things. We thank you for the hope of Christ, which is our living hope. We thank you that we can rest our weary souls in you. Thank you for Trey. Thank you for his journey, for his openness, his ministry. Bless him that he may be a blessing to others as he has been to us today. For we ask our prayer in the name of Christ Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Amen. Between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness. Or through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could 
and minds with a real passion for your truth and forgive us when we are reluctant to allow your Holy Spirit to stir us. Continue to speak to us as we journey through Advent, showing us again what your coming means to us. And as you draw close to us, help us to draw close to you. We pray for Christians all around the world, preparing to celebrate your coming in human form. 
fill us all with hope, with vision and with courage. Unite us in our witness that your light may be seen shining from individuals, from communities of faith. We pray for those who feel they are living in darkness, those struggling with fear, with illness, those who are lonely, those who await news which seems to hold no hope. We ask that your light would shine, bringing comfort, strength, healing, peace and hope. We pray for the many people who will have spent today shopping and busily preparing for the coming of Jesus without any knowledge or understanding of who Jesus is or what this message of hope means for the world. We pray that the message of Jesus coming for each and every one might touch hearts and bring challenge. We pray for one another that you will strengthen us in love and faith and as we continue our Advent journey that you would enable us to carry your light with wonder and with joy and with love that you will use us to shine light in dark places to bring hope and to share the message of your coming we pray for the coming of your kingdom of light and hope in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities and throughout the world. So as Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, it's been lovely to be with you tonight in this, in this virtual way as we walk deeper into Advent. I wanted to share as a way of blessing and benediction a prayer from the AA community. And it's the third step prayer, which is right at the beginning of the process where we uh, learn to turn our lives over to God. And this is a prayer um, that I pray every day and I offer it, I offer it to you um, and to us in this Advent service. So let's pray this, this, this prayer of blessing. God, Help us offer ourselves to you, to build with us and do with us as you will, God. Relieve us of the bondage of self that we may better do your will. Take away our difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those we would help of your power, your love, and your way of life. May we do your will always. Amen. We thank God that he's been with us during our time of worship and reflection. If anything in our act of worship has inspired you, challenged you, caused you to question, as ever, there's the opportunity for you to have time of prayer and ministry. If you want to contact me to do so, please see my details at the end of the service. I'd be delighted to talk with you or share with you.
or indeed if you want to talk to someone that you know and trust then please don't let that opportunity slip. Thank you for sharing and a prayer of blessing. On this Advent evening, O God, who comes with hope and light, indwell us with your light and your grace, that we may share it where you send us and be light in this world. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us, with all for whom we have prayed, and with all God's people, this Advent season and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our service. We end as we sing the Advent hymn, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus. Come.